Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We're just about to get started. Uh, Renly, next slide, please. All right, so the title of the digital event today is YPG and IPSF, International Professional Organizations for Early Career Pharmacists and Pharmaceutical Scientists. And the event will last approximately two hours. Um, just a few announcements before we get started. The webinar is being recorded and will be available on the FIP website. We encourage you to become a member of FIP if you are not already. And you are welcome to ask questions via the chat or the Q&A box. And um, we're always happy to hear your feedback about the session. Um, we'll be sharing on social media channels and feel free to follow us and, and just um, give us your feedback. Today, um, attendees will gain insights about organizational structure of FIP, YPG, and IPSF. Attendees will learn about networking and volunteer opportunities within the organizations, and then learn about the benefits of membership. And finally, hear firsthand accounts of how membership has impacted our members. So um, we'll jump into introductions. I'm Louisa Sullivan, the current president-elect of YPG. I'm also a clinical pharmacist at the University of Washington in the United States. I completed my doctor of pharmacy at Creighton University and then completed a PGY-1 post-degree um, residency at Dignity Health in Stockton, California, and a PGY-2 in emergency medicine at Valleywise Health in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I attended my first IPSF World Congress in 2016, and I've since spoken at IPSF and FIP Congresses, as well as the World Health Assembly. And I'm passionate about creating opportunities for leadership involvement for early career pharmacists. I will introduce uh, Joao next. He is the current president of IPSF, and he's a fifth year pharmacy student, a uh, student of pharmaceutical sciences at the Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Porto. He's serving as the president of IPSF, leading international advocacy for 500,000 pharmacy students and recent graduates in over 100 countries worldwide. He's been involved in several student and youth-led organizations and volunteering at a local, national, and global level. He's enthusiastic about public health, pharmacy education, and workforce development. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Hi. Nice to be with you. All right, so um, we'll do a quick uh, introduction to IPSF, or I'm, I'm sorry, to YPG first, um, and then we'll move into more information about IPSF, and at the end, we'll have time for questions. So we'll get started with our first speaker, who I'll introduce. Renly Lim is the current president of YPG. She's also a research fellow at the University of South Australia in Australia. Um, she is studying quality use of medications and pharmacy research, or it, she's a research fellow at the Quality Use of Medications and Pharmacy Research Center at the University of South Aust Australia. Her research interests include medication safety, digital health, health services research, and community engagement. She's leading a team of 45 pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists from 21 countries and passionate about developing the next generation of pharmacy and research leaders. Welcome, Renly. Thank you very much, Louisa, for the introduction um, and welcome everyone to this uh, digital event today. Um, I'm really um, honored to be the first speaker of, of the digital event. Um, so very quickly, a little bit about me. So I'm a pharmacist by background. Um, I completed my undergraduate uh, back in 2010 um, in the UK. Um, and then I worked as a hospital pharmacist in Malaysia, and that's where, where I grew up. Um, and then shortly after, I did my PhD, um, working uh, with a medical device company where I ran a clinical trial um, to test the effectiveness of a medical device for women with incontinence. Um, in 2016, I worked with my head of the Tropical Medicine Research Unit um, on a community engagement program for malaria elimination. Um, it was funded by the Wellcome Trust in the UK. Um, and then in 2016, um, in October, I moved to South Australia, where I started working as a research fellow um, 
at the University of South Australia. And my, um, as Louisa mentioned, my research interest is on medication safety, quality of medicines. Um, and currently, I'm also the president of the FIP Young Pharmacist Group. Um, I should also mention that um, my involvement with FIP started five years ago, back in 2017, um, where I first got involved uh, in the FIP subcommittee. Um, so as you can see, I have quite a wide range of background, and so I'm happy to chat with anyone about um, anything at all. So I've worked from medication safety, hospital industry, malaria, um, philanthropy, um, YPG, um, FIP. So um, that's a bit about me. Um, so what is FIP? Um, for those of you who, are, who may be new to FIP, so FIP is the International Pharmaceutical Federation. Um, it is the global uh, federation of national associations representing over 4 million pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists and educators around the world. Um, it, uh, the vision of FIP is a world where everyone benefits from access to safe, effective, quality and affordable medicines. Um, and pharmaceutical care and our mission is to improve global health by supporting the advancement of pharmaceutical practice, sciences and education. Um, so this slide is a bit complicated, but um, this just shows the FIP structure. Um, in the middle, you can see that um, there's YPG um, at the heart. Um, so um, at, within FIP, there's Board of Pharmaceutical Practice and Board of Pharmaceutical um, Science, uh, BPP and BPS, and then FIP Education. And I'll quickly also go through um, each of these different sections and six. Um, but within all these sections and six, we all have um, young pharmacist group rep uh, representation in there. Um, so Border Farm School practice um, encompasses uh, eight different sections. We have academic pharmacy, social and administrative pharmacy, industrial pharmacy, military and emergency pharmacy, clinical biology, um, hospital pharmacy, community pharmacy, health and medicine information, um, and under the Border Farm School Sciences special interest groups, we have new medicines, drug delivery and manufacturing, personalized and precision medicine, um, regulatory sciences and quality, pharmacy practice research, new generation and pharmaceutical sciences. Um, under pharmacy um, education feedback, we have academic pharmacy, workforce development hub and academic institutional membership. So it's taken me many, many years to finally remember all of these names. Um, but if you would like to know more, um, it's all of these are on um, the FIP website. So um, as you can see here, there's really no shortage of um, involvement, whatever field that you're in, in pharmacy and pharmaceutical science, you can definitely find a place that you belong to within FIP. Um, and also, uh, if anyone um, is familiar with FIP, we've talked a lot about this. Um, in 2020, FIP launched the, uh, what we call the One Fit Development, uh, One Fit Goals. Um, the idea is to bring practice, science, education, workforce together. There is There are a total of 21 Fit Development Goals. Um, and, and they're all listed here, again, available on the website if anyone would like to know more. So that was in 2020, um, was, it was um, the launching of the goals. Um, 2021, one, uh, FIT really um, focused on implementing the FIT development goals. Um, there's a lot of activities that are ongoing and um, I think everyone might be aware there's so many um, activities and programs that are conducted by FIP this year. There are a lot of, uh, digital events. I think there are over, I think 200 maybe. Um, there's one today. Um, there's one on Monday also led by the Young Pharmacist Group. So this year we have eight events that are led by the Young Pharmacist Group, but many others that involve at YPG. So that's just very, um, really, really quick introduction of FIP. Um, um, what we here today really is to um, introduce you to the FIP, YPG. So what's the FIP? YPG stands for the Young Pharmacist Group, um, and we are, we are pharmacists, pharmaceutical scientists, and students um, who are under 35. Um, so either under 35 or if you've graduated less than um, five years from your first degree in pharmacy or pharmaceutical science, so irrespective of bachelor's, master's, PhD, or pharmacy degree conferral. So once you join FIP as a member, um, and if you uh, fulfill this eligibility criteria, then you're also automatically a member of YPG uh, with no additional fees. And membership for FIP, um, that it depends on your uh, country income level. Um, and it, 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 there's a bit of a range. Um, so YPG steering committee, um, I'm incredibly uh, proud that we have um, 
a huge um, subcommittee and steering committee. Um, I'm working really closely with uh, uh, Louisa, who's the president-elect of Virginia from Argentina. She's doing her PhD in France. Um, our secretary, um, Kwai Bom, our chairperson of projects from Nigeria, and Lucas uh, from Brazil, chairperson of public relations. We are scattered all over the world. Uh, it makes it really fun when we need to uh, have our um, monthly steering committee meetings. Um, and we also have our uh, subcommittee. So uh, this is our current subcommittee members. We have our public relations team, uh, projects team, um, FIP liaisons, um, and a lot of YPG representatives within FIP. So a lot of words in here. Um, I don't expect you to be able to read this. Um, but um, just, just know that there are um, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for involvement for members who are interested. Um, so a bit about um, our priorities this year, which is a very similar continuation from last year. Um, what we do within FYP, YPG, all aligns with the one fit strategy and fit building goals, which I briefly uh, touched on earlier. Um, and our three main goals this year is to build relationships um, within FIP and externally. Um, and we will have liaisons, which I'll briefly introduce them as well. Um, we really focus on capacity building and our chairperson of projects, Yip Kwai Bom, um, will talk a bit about that in a second. And we also have our uh, public relations team um, focus, focusing on member engagement um, and Safi, our uh, Facebook manager and, um, and media uh, manager as well. Um, she will be uh, talking a bit about that. Um, so I'll quickly also introduce our YPG liaisons and purpose of that. So YPG liaisons uh, for each of the sections and special interest groups and the keep education. Um, we have a person who uh, acts as a link of communication um, between YPG and these sections and six uh, and YPG members. Um, their role is really representing YPG's interests um, and attending the meetings. Um, they also constantly explore ways to get YPG members involved and bringing information and opportunities back from sections um, six uh, to all YPG members. Um, so um, as I showed um, in the uh, ch chart earlier, um, we have different sections and special interest groups and uh, education will possibly have and so on. Um, and for each of these, um, section and six, we have a um, YPG liaison. Um, also to mention that our next call for our subcommittee will come um, out sometime in October. So uh, if you'd like to be involved, please um, um, follow us on social media and those will be posted. And if you remember, you also received a MailChimp from us. Um, so these are just um, some of the events where our liaisons were involved in. Um, so not only the ACAS liaisons for the FIP um, sections and special interest groups, they also get a lot of different opportunities of speaking events um, at international events. So for example, the top left pharmacy profession overseas experience, our um, um, liaison was asked to speak um, in an event um, in Nigeria. Um, on the right, leadership and military pharmacy, um, our military and emergency pharmacy liaison um, from Jordan, he was asked to speak at an event um, in Indonesia. Um, so the beauty of going digital now, um, and this is also uh, more, so just a few more examples. Um, so what else do we do? We have our, we really focus on um, engaging with our subcommittee members. Um, and so we have a bi-weekly e-party where we just get to know each other, we connect, um, we um, talk about our work, we talk about personal lives, we play games. Um, and so it's just, really nice to be able to connect to, uh, with pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists globally. Um, so how can you get involved um, just to um, advertise a bit? Um, we have our virtual business meeting coming um, in a week time next Saturday um, and Monday as well, where we will um, report. So uh, we, we've, doing, we've done so, so many things over the past year. We will be uh, presenting all of those um, at our business meeting. Um, we have also sent out our annual report uh, just a few, I think, a week ago. Um, and next Saturday as well, we will be having our steering committee election. You may have seen it on social media. We have four positions. So our president-elect um, 
secretary and chairperson of project and chairperson of public relations. Um, if you are a member, you would have received the MailChimp for registration link. If you're not, um, please um, sign up and register and we um, so that you can um, join us at our, at our business meeting. Um, I think that's all from me. Um, thank you very much for your time. And I will now hand it over back to Louisa to introduce Koibom. Thank you so much, Renly. That's a wonderful introduction to our organization. And um, I will tell you, it is really fun to join those e-parties. So um, I highly encourage you to join and um, join us. So um, I forgot to mention at the top of the hour that certificates of attendance for the event will be sent out on Monday. So keep an eye out on the email you use to register for that. Now, um, introducing Ikwaibom. He is our current chairperson of projects. For YPG, he's also a hospital pharmacist at the Zenith Medical and Kidney Center in Nigeria. He graduated from the School of Pharmacy in the University of Uyo in 2016 as ha and has championed quite a number of projects in Nigeria um, pertaining to pharmacy, one being the National Agency for Food Drugs Administration and Control, uh, Youth Against Drug Abuse campaign, where he acted as project coordinator to ensure the project was well executed across different regions of the country. He has served in the Pharmaceutical Science Society of Nigeria Young Pharmacists Group as the National Secretary slash Project Coordinator and is currently serving as the Chairperson of Projects for YPG. He works as the Head of Pharmacy at Zenith Medical and Kidney Center in Abuja and, he's, uh, and it's a leading kidney transplant center in West Africa. He provides pharmaceutical care services, drug information to other healthcare professionals for inpatients and outpatients. Welcome, Ikwaibom. Thank you very much, Louisa. Um, thank you very much for all those who have made it to this webinar. Um, next slide, I'm going to be um, walking us through all the different projects of the FIPYPG. Um, quite a number of them are, we get to, you know, arrange and ensure that they're all uh, made possible for our members. I'll just list them here on this slide. We have the remote volunteering program. We have the mentorship program. We recently launched the career development toolkit for early career pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists. And uh, for this year, we're working at, on post popularizing the career development toolkit. And part of the plans we had were basically making sure that our members have webinars and digital events to focus on the different areas of the toolkit. And also engagement plans with uh, national YPGs where we collaborate and ensure that we are part and parcel of their trainings and you know feature in some of the digital events and get to also promote the career development toolkit. And then to wrap it up, we're going to talk about our grants and scholarship as they are obtainable at the FIP YPG for not only our members but also some available for members of the IPSF. On the next slide, I'm just going to show you a bit on the remote volunteering program. Now, for the remote volunteering program, we have uh, FIP basically provides us opportunities, and the uh, YPG gets to send out a call to her members. And then there is recruitment, and then uh, once or twice there, there is a for, for a particular duration of time. We have uh, maybe three to six months, some longer. And currently, we have um, we have um, five remote volunteering remote volunteers cutting across Farmer Bridge, FIPYs, some with um, to provide some support or some uh, assistance in maybe making a toolkit for the particular program. And then we also have our volunteer at the University uh, Uni Twin. So all these are opportunities we provide for our members. And um, one of the catch there is that you have to be a YPG member to be, be able to apply and get selected to our removal and sharing program.
Ja, kan jag då? Louisa, I can see that Ikobom is not anymore online. So he might have to reconnect. Uh, okay, yes, he said that he, he just sent me a message saying that he is having a little bit of technical difficulty. Um, so we'll give him a moment to reconnect. Um, in the meantime, I will just um, say that we have gotten quite a few questions about the attendance certificate. Um, you don't need to fill out any additional forms or anything. Um, we'll get your email from your registration. So um, don't worry about that. We'll give Equivon just a moment. Um, in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, feel please feel free to pop in in the Q&A box um, and we'll answer them um, after the presentation. Uh, we also got a question um, asking if students can apply for the YPG subcommittee. Friendly, do you want to answer that? Um, yes, sure. Um, so yes, um, the short answer is yes. Um, you can apply um, as long as you are a, a FIP member and you fulfill the criteria of being a YPG member. So um, like I said earlier, the criteria is um, a, under 35 or you graduated within the last five years. And we also uh, take students as well. So um, yes, um, please uh, feel free to uh, submit your application, uh, which will we'll send a call out sometime in October. Kwaibom is trying to reconnect. Any other questions while we're waiting? Okay, so we did receive one more question um, about whether or not students can be members of FIP. And the answer is absolutely. Um, you can join FIP as a student and after graduation, um, but you are eligible definitely as a student. Uh, we also got a question about uh, the difference in working between IPSF and YPG. And I think that um, in many ways it's similar. Obviously the structure of YPG is different than the structure of IPSF. Um, however, you know, we each have a subcommittee that consists of people who volunteer to um, assist with the goals and, and help us achieve uh, our, our goals for the year in each organization. So I think um, it's hard to describe more specifically than that because it very much depends on which role you're interested in, in uh, working in. Um, okay, it seems that Equibom is having trouble finding. Uh, oh. Hmm. Uh, I had trouble with my network, but now I'm back. 
So as I was talking about the mentorship program, um, it was relaunched in 2020 and we just wrapped up the, the 2020 slash 2021 cycle. Uh, we, the next cycle, 2021 slash 2022 cycle is going to be commencing in September of 2021. We've already um, completed the marching of both the mentors and the mentees and the program is going to start next month. And um, the peculiarity about this cycle is that we're going to have another batch in January. So it's going to be two batches for the next cycle. And uh, the duration is nine months. And it usually it, the program involves a unique system of mentor mentee uh, matching based on area of interest and specific objectives and uh, their individual goals. Um, on the next slide, I'm going to just um, take a bit into the career development toolkit for early career pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists. Now, the, the career development toolkit was developed uh, last, last year and launched uh, last year, December to be precise. Uh, the career development toolkit is aimed at providing early career pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists with a step-by-step -step, uh, guide to creating a personalized uh, career development plan. Now, the toolkit is intended to guide users to reflect on their own development, uh, identify their own development needs, and recognize skills and tools needed to progress with their career development. So, um, as you can see, it aligns with goal two, goal four, five, six, eight, and nine, and it's uh, available to download on the website. Uh, and it can actually be beneficial for not only FIPYP members, but also members of the IPSF. My next slide, I, I would uh, try as much as possible to maybe give you a bit of an insight into the toolkit. Now, it talks about um, career pattern opportunities in pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists, and then it gives you some insight on career development cycle, you know, effective reflection, planning, taking action, and then evaluating. Then also um, delves into global frameworks to support professional development, such as the global competency framework and the global advanced development framework. And then it also gives you information on the developing transferable skills, part of um, a bit to improve on uh, developing transferable skills. We had the uh, last webinar on it for our members. Uh, and also, it also gives us some insight on strategies for successful career change, which our next webinar is going to be based on. We'll have our next webinar on the 30th of August uh, on strategies for successful career change. And also on this slide, you can scan and easily download the toolkit for your own individual benefit. On the next slide, and I think um, while I when I began my presentation, I mentioned that the Career Development Toolkit was uh, post-publicized this year. We've had a series of webinars to um, help publicize the toolkit to our members. So these are part of the execu executed webinars we've had this year. The first one was, uh, was in March on continuing professional development cycle. Then we had a follow-up in June on effectively utilizing the GROW model as a way to develop your skills and expertise. We had uh, another one in uh, July. It was based on uh, the mentorship program, effectively developing uh, transferable skills and the positive impact, impact of training and certification in career progression. Then we had, um, we're going to be having another one on strategies for social career changes, like I mentioned. Then we we had the global launch for the role of early career pharmacists in pharmaceutical science, the role of early career pharmaceutical organizations in global health, and uh, which we had in August. And on the next slide, we're going to just show us the upcoming webinars that we have um, this year, uh, some planned webinars of the FIPYPG. One is on career paths and opportunities in pharmacy and pharmaceutical scientists, which we can all, um, you know, log in and get some very intriguing information on that area. And then also another one coming up in December on a global framework to support career development. On the next slide, you need to give us some information on grants and scholarship of the IPYPG. 
Now, um, currently we have the Michael Traveler Award mm. all was sent out um, last month yes. and it's still open up until now to members. Uh, the Michael Travel Award was created in 2007 by the Industrial Pharmacy Section of the FIP. The award is actually in honor of Michael, uh, who dedicated a lot in improving uh, industrial pharmacy in not only research, but also being actively involved in the area of industrial pharmacy. Uh, the award um, is an amount of 1,500 euros to support transportation, accommodation, and meals to attend the annual FIP Congress. And um, in the application criteria, it's open to both FIP, YPG, and uh, IPSF members. And the applicant should be working or conducting research in industrial pharmacy. And um, one of the limitations is that if you're a previous winner, you cannot uh, be given the opportunity to apply again, or you may not go through. Uh, and then uh, on the professional innovation grant is uh, is actually a YPG grant for professional innovation. And it consists of 1,000 euros for the implementation of a project by young pharmacists or pharmaceutical scientists who is a YPG member. So projects can stem from any field of pharmacy, practice, science or education but must focus on innovation that improves the practice of pharmacy or the advancement of pharmaceutical science with direct clinical application. Uh, now, pending acceptance of the project report, awardee uh, may, in addition, be granted complimentary registration or return EPICS, FA, and hotel accommodation to attend the IP conference. Uh, applications are evaluated based on some criteria, basically significance and relevance, creativity and innovation, scientific accuracy, feasibility, and, clar and clarity of communication. Uh, well, for, for clarity, of Shine Innovation Grant, uh, the call was not out this year, but we are hoping that next year we're going to have a call out and uh, we're going to have this opportunity out to YPG members once more. And then for the Tornot Scholarship, there's also uh, a scholarship awarded by the F and now, in the FIP Foundation for Education and Research it gives an annual scholarship to an individual young pharmacist or pharmaceutical scientist or a pharmacy student, either an undergraduate or postgraduate, with, with outstanding leadership skills to assist him or her to attend the Congress organized by the FIP. Uh, just to just um, say a little bit about the um, Bit of background. It was named after um, late General Secretary of the FIP, Mr. Tonok. And um, what does it, what does the scholarship entail? Now, what it provides, it gives you FIP Congress registration, hotel accommodation, maximum of six nights, and a return ticket to the FIP Congress location, and then one year individual membership of the FIP. Now, apart from those financial benefits I mentioned, you will also be recognized as a potential leader in the global world of pharmacy and pharmaceutical science. And uh, likewise, the scholarship also involves a series of interviews and discussions with FIP leaders of the FIP Foundation, the FIP. And the recipient will also receive free FIP membership, just like I mentioned, for one year. I will be recognized at the opening ceremony. Just so um, for this year, just like the professional innovation grant, the Tarnock Scholarship um, call uh, will not be out this year, but we are hoping that it will be out next year uh, so that we can have um, future champions in recognition, not only by the FIP YPG, but also at the FIP level. So thank you very much. That is all from me. Apologies once more for my uh, connection error initially. Thank you so much, Yikwai Bam. Um, I will just encourage you to continue asking questions in the Q&A and we will collect all of those questions to answer at the end of the event. Um, we're answering a few of the, the more technical questions as we go, but um, we'll pose a lot of these questions to the speakers at the end of the event. All right, so on to our next speaker.
Uh, Safiye is our current YPG media coordinator for 2021. She also manages our Facebook account and she is pharmacist in charge at, uh, I'm not gonna be able to say <laughs> the name of her pharmacy, but um, she, she's the pharmacist in charge at her own pharmacy, um, as well as the treasurer, treasurer and liaison for the Cyprus Turkish Pharmacist Association in Cyprus. She's a passionate young pharmacist, currently working in her own community pharmacy since January of 2018. She is the founder of the first Pharmacy Students Association in Cyprus, EMPU, EMUPSS, who also acquired memberships to IPSF and EPSA respectively and started a student exchange program in Cyprus as the first ever chairperson. Her passion for pharmacy and non-governmental organization work has led her to be more involved in local, national, and international organizations. She became the youngest pharmacist elected to the executive board of KTEB, the National Pharmacist Association of Cyprus, to date. She is the current FIP council member representing Cyprus, uh, the FIP YPG media coordinator and Facebook manager, and also advisor to the reception committee of the IPSF World Congress of 2022. And you'll get to hear more about her journey now. Welcome, Zafi. Thanks, Louisa, for your kind introduction. So let's start with my presentation. Um, I'll be giving you a brief information about myself and an informal introduction in the next slide. Yes, so as Lisa has also mentioned, I'm a Cypriot community pharmacist working in my own community pharmacy since 2018. And I have attended over 400 international online and offline events in the past two years. Most of them are online, as you can imagine, as we're going through this uh, pandemic. And I have been a speaker throughout this um, period, over um, 50 online and offline events. And I am passionate about traveling, volunteering, language and linguistics, and skincare as well. So um, I, I have also um, included my uh, DNA of my pharmacy journey here briefly. I will be uh, speaking more about it in um, further onwards during my presentation. Yes, let's continue with the presentation. Let's start with the national uh, part first, local and national level of the involvement. Um, EMUPSS, the Eastern Mediterranean University Pharmacy Student Society, we have founded the um, association in 2014 and it represents pharmacy students and recent graduates up to two years of graduation. So um, it helps in developing important skills such as public speaking and academic research. And uh, onwards, after founding EMUPSS, we have uh, found out about uh, IPSF and EPSA, the European Pharmacy uh, Students Association, and got the membership, which I'll be uh, discussing more about in the coming slides. And EMUPSS is also um, the only and the main uh, national organization that hosts STEP in Cyprus. So here in the um, presentation, you can see the founding executive committee, 2014 and 15, and um, other um, executive committee members in uh, those three years. Following up with the um, next slide, I will be giving more information about the international phase of my journey. So um, as I have mentioned that we found out about IPSF in after, uh, immediately after founding, out, founding our um, local organization, local national organization, EMUPSS, um, about IPSF and student exchange program to 2014. So we decided to um, increase our um, involvement in the international level to start uh, with a good foundation. So we have um, organized a lot of events nationally and locally, public health and professional development. And we have decided to apply to become a member to IPSF in 2015. And that we have attended the 61st IPSF World Congress in Hyderabad, India, where we got the approval and acceptance as a member in organization. Then um, afterwards, I became the first ever student exchange officer for Cyprus that um, the student exchange program has officially started after our uh, membership and setting up the program. 
you can see our photos during the Congress on the right side. So let's start about the student exchange program since the, um, my involvement has started in the international part two. Um, it will be more of like national and international two in one. And about the student exchange program, my um, fellow friends from IPSF will be giving more information about it in their um, slide, but let me give you a brief information too. So it is IPSF's largest project and oldest program for students and young professionals in the whole world. And it is a really unique educational and cultural experience with pharmaceutical focus. So you get to experience um, pharmacy in all over the world um, with uh, different backgrounds. And um, my uh, local journey was throughout 2015 and 2017 as the chairperson of SEP in Cyprus. Throughout my um, mandate as the student exchange officer and the chairperson of uh, SEP in Cyprus, I have uh, sent out and hosted over 100 IPSF members from all of the regional offices. And we have organized numerous educational, scientific, cultural, and tourist trips. So you can see what um, we have prepared and we are, what we have done throughout SEP in Cyprus on the right side again, brief uh, sweet memories from the program. Following up at the international level. So in uh, 2016, after my first year um, becoming successful and being selected as the best new SEP association throughout the mandate of 2015 and 2016. So in the first year of um, starting the SEP in Cyprus, uh, we have been uh, selected as the best new SEP association by the IPSF um, executive committee and chairperson of student exchange that time. And um, in the next year, uh, while also working as the student exchange officer in 2016 and 17th mandate, I have been also appointed to the student exchange committee, which is composed of uh, 10 past student exchange officers globally. So there are um, 10 um, SEC members, and each one of us were leading a group of SEOs. Since I am from the European region, I have led a group of 10 SEOs. And throughout our mandate as the student exchange committee member, we have delivered trainings and workshops and also led and moderated SEO meetings. And here you can see on the left side, the student exchange committee of my term and um, the SEO meeting in Taipei, Taiwan on the second photo. And um, you can also see me presenting about EMUPSS in uh, Congress again. And on the third photo, you can see my election as the um, chairperson of student exchange throughout from the election. So following up with the next slide, we'll be continuing about more on the student exchange program. And after my election photo, you can see you, you have seen previously, uh, I have been elected as the IPSF chairperson of student exchange by the 63rd uh, General Assembly in Taiwan. And throughout uh, my mandate, we have worked with my student exchange committee and fellow uh, IPSF executive committee members that we have introduced 11 new associations to SAP in, uh, during that year. So um, while we were working hard in introducing new associations, we were also um, working hard to also maintain and even enhance the program. So um, we have decreased the SEO unresponsiveness by 20% during my mandate and reached a full 100% report submission rate. And the successful exchange rates have been increased by 38%. And um, we have gone over a thousand successful exchanges reaching 1,291 in 2018. And what we have done as the first time um, during SEP's history in 2017 and 18, it was um, the SEP merchandise that we created our first of its kind merchandise and the branding video. And throughout the year, we have updated all the old documents and created many new um, materials that SEOs and member organizations as well as the local um, committees could use. So here you can uh, see familiar faces also Luisa um, as part of the executive committee 
during my mandate. Um, you can see the student exchange committee on top. And um, from the World Congress, the group photo, as well as executive committee on the left side and the right side. Following on with the next slide, we'll be um, continuing about um, journey and as part of IPSF that during to, um, 2018, I have attended and represented IPSF to the um, World Health Organization 71st World Health Assembly during Geneva, Switzerland. And um, also in uh, 2018, it was my first time coming in contact and like getting to know more about and becoming more enthusiastic about I, um, FIP. That I have represented IPSF and the National Pharmacist Association in my um, attendance to the FIP World Congress in Glasgow 2018. Um, so it was my first YPG business meeting to attend as well as um, the representative for IPSF. And in 2018, I have also started my mandate as um, during 2018 to 2019 as the immediate past chairperson of student exchange and um, as an advisor whenever needed. So um, the student exchange program and the committee, we had the sustainability. So for 2021, which is very recent news that um, after the the Turkish Pharmacist Association Youth Commission got the Congress officially that it will be organized in Turkey next year in 2022, uh, which I had the background uh, with TPAYC previously as I was the uh, president of um, MU for TPAYC in two, uh, 2013. So I am currently acting um, as their advisor and advising the reception committee in organization of the 67th IPS of World Congress. Here you can see also on the second photo, um, the previous student exchange officers and the student exchange committee members that were um, attending the World Health Organization's WHA. And on down right, um, it was the previous IPSF honorary life member that um, he has visited us in our IPSF booth in FIP Congress in Glasgow, UK. So following on with the next slide, I will be giving you a brief information after, the, after my graduation and registration as a pharmacist and my uh, progress and journey as a national pharmacist. So in 2017, in um, September, before um, opening my own pharmacy and working on working only in internationally, I have decided that I will be also stepping up further and getting more involved locally and nationally too with um, my uh, fellow pharmacists and um, their support. I have been elected to um, National Pharmacy Association Auditing and Supervisory Board for the term 2017-2019. Then uh, it followed me being elected to the Executive Committee as part um, as the treasurer for the term 2019 and 2021. And uh, in 2019, um, I have been appointed to be the FIP liaison and to be in charge of the external relations of the association because of my um, background in IPSF and involvement in um, FIP. So uh, in 2019, I have been also involved in academia that I am, um, I have been part-time lecturer and have been a visiting examiner into universities in the island. And in 2020, for the um, Council of FIP, I have been uh, voted by my fellow executive committee members and um, um, members of KT, KTEB, I have been um, voted to be the FIP council member. Yeah. So um, what we do as the National Pharmacist Association, we do um, organize numerous educational and scientific events for our fellow uh, pharmacists members, as well as public health events for public too. And we're involved in the policy making. So um, I would like to also mention about the memorial uh, forest that we have um, 
planted um, seedlings in um, 2021, the first photo. But we have also, I have uh, planted one uh, seedling for um, FIP by PG2. And the rest of the photos you can see from my attendance to um, the World Congress and also the elections and from the examiner, um, as an examiner of the um, pharmacy students. So moving on with the next slide, I will be uh, briefly speaking about my involvement as part of the FIP and my PG. So as I have mentioned, I have um, had my first contact and enthusiasm started in 2018 uh, with FIP and my PG. You can see in the second photo um, in the middle uh, on the right side, that um, I have been one of um, the attendees, first attendees of the first um, FIP YPG leadership development workshop. Um, after my involvement um, and becoming elected to the executive committee, we have increased um, the National Pharmacist Association's activity within FIP um, by sending reports or uh, inputs in the regular um, events, participation, and etc. And in 2020, um, I have um, translated um, COVID-19 documents into Turkish that were prepared by FIP. And in 2021, I have been um, selected to the FIP YPG subcommittee, first as um, part, first as a Facebook manager, and then uh, since uh, April 2021, um, I have been working as media coordinator and I would like to proudly share that as FIP YPG, social media accounts and the media team has been shown as an example to other FIP sections on how we are uh, using our platforms and promoting our events, which is really proud uh, thing for us. And you can see um, below some of the event participation that I have attended um, for the European region and general um, uh, community pharmacy section meeting, steering committee meeting, and right below you can see the first uh, YPG um, meeting among the subcommittee. And uh, I would like to at the same time heartily uh, encourage you to follow our social media channels on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, all at, at FIP YPG, F I P YPG so that you can uh, be always up to date and uh, get more information about any of our coming events. So moving on with the next slide, I will be briefly, you, briefly giving you my summary that I have um, attended uh, pharmacy school in 2020, 2012 and 2013. I have briefly mentioned about the Turkish Pharmacist Association Youth Commission that I have been involved and selected as a president. And in 2014, we have founded EMUPSS, IPSF Journey, and EPSA Journey. That I was a part of um, the, I was as an official delegate attending and the trainers coordinator for Cyprus. And in 2015, we have founded SEP in Cyprus. Then uh, my SEP journey has started to become more uh, diversified as the student exchange committee member while I have graduated doing um, these um, events and following up with my career, then um, I have been also elected to the IPSF executive committee and then to the National Pharmacy Association board. Then I have uh, opened my own community pharmacy, attended the World Health Organization's assembly, WHA, and then I have been uh, elected to the National Pharmacy Association Executive Committee, then voted to be the council member of FIP, then um, joined Academia as part-time lecturer, as I have previously mentioned. And I have been uh, attended again um, to the WHA, but this time uh, representing my country. Then in 2020, I have um, been as part of uh, co-founders for the National Council for Occupational Safety and Health, in 2020, we have translated the resources for COVID into Turkish for um, our fellow um, pharmacists from the country and from Turkey. And uh, in 2021, as 
I have mentioned uh, my uh, subcommittee journey involvement with FIPYPG has officially started. And in 2021, lastly, the newest uh, information, but I am currently the reception committee advisor for IPS of World Congress for the next year. So I think I have summer, like summarized everything and we can just continue with the next slide so that I can give you a brief take home message. I would be um, suggesting you um, that you don't basically miss any opportunity, just do evaluate and make sure that make the most of every opportunity that you will be um, getting and don't just work hard because if you work hard, uh, it, you will be just um, tiring yourself. So I would be suggesting you to rather than um, only working hard to do work smart and effectively and make sure to read a lot to improve yourself, not only personally, but also professionally at the same time. Um, while you're um, doing all these, you'll be also um, improving yourself in soft and hard skills. And if you don't have anything, that's, um, that's a really good opportunity for you actually. So that if you don't have any like sets or ready grounds that you can jump in, so you can create your own opportunity. But if you already have set grounds that already um, there's something that you can get involved in, don't miss that. Do get involved at any time that you can. Yes, so let me just thank you for listening up my part in my presentation with the next slide and uh, the information that you can reach me. And let me just repeat at the same time that make sure to follow us as FIPYPG, Facebook page, Instagram page, LinkedIn and Twitter page so that you'll be up to date with all of our uh, upcoming events as well as opportunities that we offer for our members. And if you're not a YPG member, I um, again heartily encourage you to become a member to FIP YPG. Thank you so much, Safi, for your amazing presentation, showing both your experience in FIP YPG and also in IPSF. Thank you so much. We will now have Mr. Osama, so we can go to the next slide, please. So Asama is currently the president-elect of IPSF. IPSF is the International Pharmaceutical Students Federation. He's from Algeria, and he's also um, an administrative pharmacist at the Ministry of Pharmaceutical Industry in Algeria and the National Agency of Pharmaceutical Products. Um, one of uh, the missions of the agency is to develop and reinforce pharmaceutical products and medical devices market regulations. He's a recent graduate of uh, do graduate Doctor of Pharmacy, PharmD, and, and now the incoming president of IPSF, advocating for the interests of pharmacy, pharmaceutical sciences students, and recent graduates from over 100 countries worldwide. Mr. Osama, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Joao, uh, for the introduction, and thank you, uh, FIPYPG, for the invitation. On behalf of IPSF, we are always uh, happy and it is always a pleasure to collaborate with FIP and uh, our colleagues from YPG. So to start uh, with the presentation, this is a brief introduction about IPSF and the extent of our activities and our involvement in the fields of uh, students representation and advocacy for pharmacy and uh, public health. So IPSF is the International Pharmaceutical Student Federation, and that is the leading international advocacy organization for pharmacy and pharmaceutical science students and recent graduates. We try to improve and promote public health through the provision of information, education, networking opportunities, and a wide range of publication and professional initiatives. In the next slide, <clears throat> We take on a little history about the Federation. So IPSF was founded uh, in 1949. That is 72 years ago. We celebrated our anniversary two, uh, two days ago on the 25th of August. It is by definition the oldest university uh, student 
organization. Now we're more than 100 countries worldwide. Uh, IPSF is an international, non-governmental, non-political, non-religious, and, and non-profit umbrella organization for pharmacy students and pharmacy students' organization. Next slide, please. Um, the structure of IPSF is uh, ideally and typical for the kind of mission and uh, the definition of the federation. We have the, our highest decision-making body that is the General Assembly where uh, every year uh, all four member organization and members of the Federation join together to make the most important decision for the continuous work of the Federation and uh, at each mandate we elect our executive committee which consists of 17 uh, different uh, members that take on uh, different aspects of the activity of the federation starting with the secretariat where we have uh, the president the secretary general and treasurer with the president elect we have our uh, relation chairpersons the external relation chairperson and international uh, internal relations chairperson in addition to our media and publication chairperson then we have our three p's or three projects uh portfolio representatives that are public health, pharmacy education, professional development, in addition to our longest running project, the student exchange program that we are celebrating next year. It's uh, anniversary uh, reception committee. And of course, the, uh, the, the representatives of the different regional offices of, of IPSF, that are the African Regional Office, the Asia, Asia Pacific Regional Office, the Eastern Mediterranean Regional Office, the, the European Regional Office, and the Pan American Regional Office. And digging down the structure, we have uh, under each portfolio uh, different co uh, coordinators and committee members, in addition to regional working groups and subcommittee members that are part of the IPSF team, in addition to the advisory board and auditing committee. Each year we do uh, release a call for uh, the IPSF team where we invite members and students and recent graduates, uh, individual members, whether or they are individual members or members of our member organization to join the team and contribute on their own level to be part of the work that IPSF is invested in uh, each year. Next slide, please. So these are the regional offices that we have already mentioned. Each regional office is directed by the regional working group and uh, its chairperson that is part of the, uh, the IPSF executive committee. Each, each regional working group is elected by the regional assembly that is composed of uh, member organizations from the Members get to elect their own media and the regional symposium that are IPSF events. Next slide, please. <clears throat> IPSF is co located with the International Pharmaceutical Federation in Den Haag, Netherlands. And we have the most beautiful corner office at the IPSF, uh, at the FIP office that shows in the picture here on the presentation. Next slide, please. Speaking of IPSF events, IPSF official events are six events that are uh, appearing on the screen with the this year's uh, host countries and logos. So basically, in addition to IPSF World Congress, that is an annual uh, occurring event where students from all over the world gets to meet and discuss different topics that are relevant to our missions and common values and objectives. There are different versions for each uh, of the regional offices. 
So we have the African Pharmaceutical Symposium, the Asia Pacific Pharmaceutical Symposium, the Eastern Mediterranean Region uh, Pharmaceutical Symposium, and uh, addition to that, the European Regional Symposium, the Pan American Regional Symposium as well. Unfortunately, for this mandate or this year, due to the COVID 19 pandemic and, and get their event to be um, live, was the African region with the reception committee from Mali. We had an interesting experience where pharmacy, uh, pharmacy students were able to demonstrate a way to organize uh, events on a regional level with a planned organization on how to keep the safety of participants. And thankfully, we have not received any reports of uh, infections during this event, which uh, personally and for everyone on the executive committee were happy and proud of our colleagues in Mali. Uh, successfully guaranteeing what they have promised and making sure that pharmacists can plan events on a uh, regional level whenever possible without causing any problems. <laughs> Next slide, please. So in order to become a member of IPSF, there are uh, several options for different uh, members or different individuals. We have our organizational membership where uh, two kinds or two categories that are full member or member in, uh, in association. The full member organization is the official representative, uh, country representative of IPSF and the official voice of the students from that country or that territory. Uh, the member in association membership is granted for any other organization from country uh, that is in a certain university or a certain region or a certain district that wishes to be part of IPSF and make it easier for its member to join and be part of the different uh, events. There is also the single membership that is uh, granted by application or granted by nomination. That is our individual members a membership and the honorary life membership that we, uh, the General Assembly does elect our honorary life member. Um, in addition to that, we offer opportunities for uh, alumni that are past IPSF team member or past contact person or student exchange officers uh, like Sophia for us or friends of the Federation that are any individual who wishes to be part of the Federation and uh, support its mission and contribute uh, in their own way uh, to the uh, fulfillment or the uh, realization of the different objectives and different events. We welcome anyone who wants to be friends of the Federation to apply and check the different conditions for each and every membership. And hopefully, us to make public health better through pharmacy. In the next slide, we try to talk about the different aspects of our activities that are uh, three P's that are pharmacy education, professional development, public health, in addition to our student exchange program and the different uh, initiatives that are under our policy and advocacy portfolios. In the next slide, we speak uh, first about our most popular portfolio that is public health. Students seem to be very enthusiastic and motivated to talk and take part in the portfolio that represents our mission as healthcare providers and future professionals in healthcare. So IPSF does celebrate and organize different public health campaigns uh, on all levels that, to highlight and to uh, sensitize the people and the professionals about um, different aspects of different uh, public health causes and public health agendas. We try to uh, diverse our activities and make sure to 
tackle both advocacy, humanitarian and sensitizing campaigns, in addition to joining globally a different event and speak about public health from the perspective of youth and pharmacy students. Next. Our professional development portfolio is an opportunity for students to learn through competition and learn through uh, different uh, activities that are supposed to help us gain or empower our students with the skills in awareness campaign where we try to promote the pharmacy profession to the public and other healthcare professionals to make sure that the um, pharmacist missions and pharmacist job within the uh, diverse interprofessional settings are well and uh, clearly promoted and presented to the public that is our audience. We try to tackle clinical counseling in addition to that in the next slide. We have different programs for professional development and personal development through the training campaigns and training camp. Our leaders in training uh, program is uh, yearly organized through different events and different locations to gather pharmacy students and to share a bilat uh, and to foster a bilateral uh, platform for exchange of uh, leadership qualities between pharmacists and uh, future pharmacists. We try to focus on different skills that are helpful for the students on a personal level, management and communication, in addition to our trainers development camp, where we try to empower our students and leaders with the skills they require to develop a, a good communication sense of information, to be good teachers, and of course, to be excellent trainers for other students and pharmacists in our uh, network and in our allied uh, organizations network as we try to uh, involve education settings and different opportunities that we may be able to arrange with the different organizations that are that we are in contact with. And next, our student exchange program, the longest running project of IPSF. Uh, it has been the one aspect of IPSF activities that was hit the hardest with the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. We went from more than 100, uh, 1,000 exchange per year to now uh, about around 50 exchanges each year. And we try to promote a uh, safe and uh, good traveling uh, practices when it comes to the pandemic. And we try to make sure that any exchange that does go through is done with the utmost uh, careful and consideration to the regulations on of the host and uh, source countries of the students. And we are proud of our student exchange officers who managed to share uh, clear and concise information to the students from all over the world. And uh, to be able to arrange exchanges in this time is something that we encourage our students to consider and our organization are very uh, responsible and committed when it comes to the safety of our students. So in normal settings, we have more than 80 associations worldwide of uh, the practice and the education, whether community, hospital, research, and uh, of course, pharmaceutical industrial opportunities. We do offer uh, exchanges that last from two weeks to two months. You, uh, the students does have the opportunity to experience pharmacy in a different country, but also it is a cultural and uh, educational exchange, an opportunity to learn about the country and opportunity to promote your own country in a different setting with, and to make sure that uh, you connect with other future professionals in the, the field that you are most interested in. And next, policy and advocacy. 
serving as the global collective voice of students and recent graduates in pharmacy and pharmaceutical science, we try to make sure that IPSF is presented and represented in different events that are relevant to our scope of activities, and to make sure that our presence at these events is efficient and um, uh, actually uh, serving the purpose of the um, presence itself. So we try to make sure to connect with everyone and network with everyone. So our delegation is an opportunity for students to represent IPSF and to expand their networking and to learn more about the work on a professional and international uh, setting. We granted with a responsible and uh, collaborative presence with different statements that we deliver at different events. And of course, we share what we, our findings with our students to, through the different materials that are uh, provided uh, on a regular basis to our students and network and our global audience. Of course, you can check our activities and the different publication that we had the pleasure to share on our website, on our different social media. And thank you so much, Joao, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Osama, for your uh, introduction about IPSF. I will now give the floor to Ms. Karima Benara. Karima is currently the chairperson of pharmacy education of IPSF. She's from Algeria as well. And she's the 2021 PharmD candidate from Algeria. And since her first uh, graduate year at the university, she was joining different local organizations, international organizations, holding different positions, mainly focused on public health, advocacy, and youth engagement in society. And she's now, as I said, the chairperson of pharmacy education, and she will talk a bit about different opportunities that students uh, can have uh, by being, by being part and members of IPSF. Karima, you have the floor. Okay, thank you so much, Joel. Thank you, uh, YPG, for um, this amazing webinar. Hello, everyone, and welcome to um, to everyone. So, um, as Osama mentioned, IPSF facilitates several projects and programs within our uh, focus areas, which are pharmacy education, professional development, and public health, as well as uh, the student exchange and um, advocacy and policy. And throughout this uh, project and program, we aim to contribute to the development of our member skills, ability, and assist them in reaching individuals within their communities. So uh, through my presentation, I will try to give an example about IPSF projects, spe like specifically the IPSF uh, pharmacy education portfolio. So pharmacy education portfolio is one of the IPSF project portfolio that has the main focus on developing and improving education initiative for uh, pharmacy students and recent graduates. The aim of the portfolio is uh, to try to engage our members uh, in educational initiatives in order to advocate for the improvement of pharmacy education system locally and globally, as well as we try to provide evidence-based um, work in order to support our advocacy work. Uh, moving to the next slide. So the pharmacy education uh, main work as part of the IPSF project is um, mainly focusing on uh, educational initiative, uh, focusing on the pharmaceutical science and pharmacy, pharmacy practice, as well as advocacy. And we have also uh, internship opportunities provided to our members, uh, which is similar to um, the YPG uh, volunteer work programs, as well as publication, uh, mainly the pharmacy education newsletter and feature and other uh, publication falls under the research. And uh, speaking on research, research is one of the main pillars of IPSF and we, uh, we try to increase uh, the knowledge exchange of our members and engage them more in creating evidence-based evidence report and um, as I said, support IPSF advocacy work. So um, moving to the next slide. So the first uh, 
activities or initiative and the pharmacy education portfolio are webinars and sessions for discussions where we try to um, like raise awareness and um, uh, enrich our members knowledge as regard the field of pharmacy practice and pharmaceutical science areas in collaboration with the board of pharmacy practice and science of FIP, as well as we tried this year to have uh, mini sessions for discussion, whether in collaboration with FIP as regard the uh, UNESCO Futures of Education Initiative. And uh, we had two successful, successful sessions for discussion where we uh, had students from all uh, around the world sharing their experience during um, pharmacy education during COVID uh, pandemic. And then we had an outcome uh, uh, session where we host speakers from FIP and um, as well as uh, IPSF and we uh, managed to uh, send those reports to the UNESCO in order to have it published on their platform. We also have a, had a session for discussion as regard the FIP development goals in order to uh, ensure that we are committing to um, like uh, having our voice as regard the, the advocacy, uh, specifically on the FIP development goals and the Nanjing statements. Moving to the next slide and uh, speaking about the one of the uh, project and the, the pharmacy education portfolio, which is research. As I said, it's one of the main pillars of IPSF. And for this year, we tried to focus more in, on this um, area. Uh, in order to provide like evidence-based data and uh, to increase our members' uh, capacities and skills in this area. So one of the platform that was created by IPSF is the Young Researchers Forum platform. It's an online learning and research community designed for pharmacy and pharmaceutical science students globally uh, by IPSF. And it has the aim to promote researching, networking, and collaborating in uh, the pharmacy practice and pharmaceutical sciences. And you can um, you can join uh, the Young Researchers Forum just by um, going to the uh, website and just create an account and you can uh, start um, your activity and um, get benefits of all the opportunities provided on the platform. The platform is used by students, recent graduate experts and collaborators, so you can join um, the platform whenever you want. Moving to the next slide and speaking about the uh, young researchers for him we this year we tried to activate this platform and um, uh, prepare similar pro project one of them uh, was the Young Researchers Forum competition where we uh, try to give our members the opportunity to um, send their articles and uh, to um, have them participate like um, give them the spirit of competition and uh, we received more than uh, 70 articles and they were all uh, really high quality articles. And uh, one of the opportunities we uh, provide our members with this year was also to, we tried to provide them with expert in research. Uh, we call them Young Researchers Forum Advisors, and these advisors will be uh, there to guide and support the users of the, the Young Researchers Forum platform, as well as answer all inquiries, all uh, questions as regard uh, research, uh, just whenever they see your question or whenever um, you ask for guidance. Moving to the next slide and uh, moving to the IPSF's opportunities and always under the pharmacy education portfolio. So one of the um, opportunities provided by IPSF is the internship uh, opportunities. And I, as I said, it's similar to the FIP YPG um, volunteering program. The, um, the internship opportunities are provided to our members by our uh, partners, such as FIP, Alliance for Health Promotion, and FPMA. And for this year, for example, next slide, please. Um, Next slide. 
So for this year, we managed to have three opportunities provided by the FIP, Alliance for Health, and the new uh, opportunity was provided by the University of Man Manchester, which is the call for open access online courses on the One Health response uh, to AMR. And each year we are trying to provide and to, to uh, have more spots for our members in order to experience uh, these internship opportunities and uh, uh, with new uh, partners or with the already existed partners. So don't miss this chance and join IPSF in order to uh, get the chance to uh, be selected for these internship opportunities. Moving to the next slide. So um, speaking about IPSF opportunities, one of the opportunities also is that we are providing our members with a platform where, the, where they can submit their publication, whether it's scientific or educational uh, publication. So we have two main uh, publication. The first one is the Pharmacy Education Newsletter. It is a semi-annually uh, educational scientific newsletter by the International, by IPSF, and gathers students to share their experience of pharmacy education with IPSF members on a global scale. So uh, for this year, for example, we have um, different um, activities shared by our member organization on the, uh, on the pharmacy education newsletter, as well as a public health campaign and competition. Um, we have also articles and poems by the, by the public health uh, committee. So it's a platform where our members can share their uh, activities, their um, work uh, in order to um, exchange their ideas with uh, other members and other pharmacy students from all over the world. The second uh, publication is FITER. It's a scientific publication of IPSF aimed at promoting research by providing a platform for students and recent graduates. And um, they can publish research articles, reviews, and even abstracts. And the theme for this year's um, uh, feature was nature and science in harmony. We each year we provide um, our publication with a theme where we, uh, with variety of topics, where our members are given the chance to speak about different topics and areas of practice. Moving to the next slide and uh, speaking about IPSF publication, uh, we have also other publications such as um, the IPSF research one-on-one -on -one booklet in order to support our members uh, to have basic information about research and in order to uh, get involved in research world more and more. We have also managed to create uh, and um, post the IPSF edu uh, Pharmacy Education Advocacy Toolkit, and all publication can be found on our website and on our social media platforms. Next slide. So uh, the final uh, opportunity that under the Pharmacy Education uh, portfolio is the educational uh, activities in IPSF event. As I Osama mentioned, we have um, um, our events, we have the global event, which is IPSF World Congress, and we have regional symposium in each uh, region. So for this year, unfortunately, we had our uh, World Congress online, but we managed to have several workshop, professional development events, such as patient counseling event and compounding uh, event. We managed also to have public online public health campaign, as well as a uh, focus group discussion and the, the pharmacy education uh, committee, where we um, give our uh, members opportunity to create a pro research proposal uh, on topics such as COVID, Alzheimer, and we got judges, experts in research uh, to help our members to uh, create a better research proposal. And um, yeah, I hope that um, you will uh, be part of this organization in order to benefit from all these opportunities and projects. And yeah, thank you. Moving to the next slide, just to... <laughs> Uh, please follow us on our social media platforms and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Karima. Um, we will now move to the questions and answers from the audience. So if you would like to ask some questions, just use the Q&A option. For now, we have uh, some questions already. So we will start by asking 
both Renly and Osama. Uh, so if they can explain how the organization is working internally so the participants can have a better understanding on, on how YPG and also uh, IPSF is working internally with the structure and also the teams. I don't know if friendly you want to start. Um, yes, thank you, Joe. <clears throat> um, so YPG, we are um, really, really active within um, FIP. Like, like I mentioned earlier, um, we have a large Slack committee where we have liaisons. So um, each of the liaisons, we have one liaison for each of the sections and six. Um, and they, um, they are, so every month we would send them an update of all the activities that are ongoing within YPG so that they are informed. And then they would then represent YPG at those meetings. Um, and then um, whatever that happens at those sections and six meetings, um, they would then feed that back to YPG. So that's always a um, two-way communication um, between uh, YPG and all the um, different sections and um, special interest groups. Um, however, um, as the part of the steering committee, me as the president, I always attend um, all the different FIP meetings as well. So um, the one bit meetings, the BPP meetings, BPS meetings, um, and all those all this information that I get um, together, I would then communicate that um, down to um, our steering committee and subcommittee. Um, so it's all about, I think, communication and um, meeting um, and, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, and so, so two-way communication um, and lots, a lot of meetings have been um, happening. Uh, we also do have uh, monthly meetings with our FIP, YPG account managers, um, Bar and Shirley, so that we are always informed with uh, what FIP are doing and uh, making sure that all our activities are aligned um, with development goals, as I mentioned during my presentation. Thank you, Joa. Thank you, Renly. Osama, you can go. Oh, okay. Thank you, Joao, for your question. Well, uh, when it comes to the work in IPSF, um, it is a very interesting aspects of um, different kind of activities that are uh, set to help students gain a certain prospect when it comes to the professional as a professional environment of work. So we try to design our meetings in a certain way that assess and uh, empower that uh, particular idea of uh, making students ready to take uh, part as soon as possible once they are graduated to be effectively collaborating and making a certain uh, efficient contribution to the world or to their own small or big communities. So as part of the executive committee, uh, members or students or recent graduates are, are expected to be responsive and uh, be us the day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month activities. We try to keep a simple, and rotative schedule of meetings in a way that the uh, time zone doesn't be play any advantage or disadvantage to the executive committee members. So we set our monthly meetings or three weekly meetings in uh, a rotative uh, time of the meeting. So we do not keep uh, waking some people. In the morning and others very late member is expected to uh, keep a uh, fluent and uh, continuous communication with their own set of teams. As we have already mentioned, each executive committee member is the leader of the committee under their portfolio or the committees in the case of so certain portfolios. So they schedule on their own meetings to communicate with their members as well. And it goes the same way on the regional level. Thank you so much. Thank you, Osama. I will now uh, pass the floor to 
uh, Louisa, so she can ask the next question. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, okay, so I've got a question for Renly and Zafir. Due to the pandemic, it has been difficult to attend conferences and connect with FIP and YPG members. What are some opportunities to network with other members and become more involved in the organization? Thank you so much. I'll, I'll, I assume I'll go first, <laughs> sorry. Um, so yes, um, I think because of the pandemic, I think people are feeling a bit uh, disconnected, although we are um, all probably connected via the internet. Uh, but anyway, um, due to the restrictions and we can't um, travel, so um, as you may have seen, uh, that FIP Guild, uh, FIP are organizing a lot of digital events, um, but I understand that you know those you probably can't um, actively engage um, with other uh, members. So uh, within YPG, we have our um, we have had several engagement activities with our natural national and regional YPG. So for example, um, we have had an, a networking event with the Malaysian Young Pharmacists chapter, um, where we brought together YPG members um, and subcommittee members um, to network with the Malaysian Young Pharmacists. We also had one with the Kenyan Young Pharmacists. Um, and I think we're also planning one with the South African Young Pharmacists. So if you um, um, you would like to have a country specific event, get in touch with us so we can organize that. Um, in addition, we also, um, I think I mentioned at our my presentation earlier that we have the YPGE party. Um, at the moment, we've limited it to the subcommittee members because um, I don't know um, how many people are interested, but obviously um, we are definitely open um, for suggestions, if you think that uh, you would like to attend those parties, uh, we can also send you the link. Um, the other option is, um, if some of you may have seen that we have a call out for leadership development program. Um, and as part of the leadership development program, we will have monthly activity where um, everyone who enrolls in that program um, will, uh, we, we run an online workshop talking about things related to leadership. But I think that's a really good opportunity to network with YPG members as well. Um, then there's mentorship program, again, um, um, networking opportunity. And I'm not sure about the, the FIP specifically, but I know that some sections also organize online networking events, for example, the social and administrative pharmacy section. I think they have um, an online networking event. So um, we always uh, um, welcome ideas on how we can better connect with our members. Um, so please get in touch with us at YPG at FIP.org. Um, those are just some of the activities that um, I can think of off, off the top of my head. There are probably a lot more, um, but um, again, follow us on social media and email us if you have any suggestions or any questions. Hope oh, that partly answers your question. Thank you. Okay, so I think Randy has basically covered up everything really nicely. And I just wanted to mention about the leadership development program. Uh, it will be running through 10 months. So it will be um, a great opportunity for you to engage throughout a long uh, period of time and also enhance uh, your personal and professional skills at the same time. Yeah, so I encourage you to apply as well at the same time to the leadership development program and you can find more information about it with the call and details on our social media channels. Great, thank you both. Um, I'll turn the floor back over to Joao for another question. Thank you, Louisa. So now we have a question um, from Keisha. Um, we, who is asking uh, how can pharmacy students and young pharmacists uh, work individually to tackle, for example, misinformation and also to debunk some myths, either about and specifically about health. I don't know if any of the speakers would like to talk a bit about how do you think that we uh, as young pharmacists or future young pharmacists can uh, really address the misinformation that we see now. Does anyone want to go? Um, I can. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. You go first, Renly. Go ahead. No, no, you go. I, I was just thinking that no one's answering, so I would. Yeah, I'm going to answer, but yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Sure. So, um, basically, the most important thing that we can do is. Uh, 
make sure that we'll be um, giving correct references like the WHO or the international organizations such as, for instance, for uh, pharmaceutical knowledges, the International Pharmaceutical Federation. So we can refer to the um, original and um, most reliable resources to tackle the uh, um, misinformation because there are lots of uh, misinformation online and everyone's sharing something without um, any um, like hundred percent reliable resource. So this is why uh, the best thing that we can do as young pharmacists is to direct each and everyone to uh, the most reliable resource such as the WHO, FIP or um, country specific like Ministry of Health uh, websites or links and information depending on the countries. Thank you so much, Safi. I'm not sure if other speakers would like to um, also answer the question. Randly, I don't know, you wanted to talk. Okay, no, I want to speak if someone answer. Um, I completely echo what Saf said. Um, I think as long as, as pharmacists, um, we know where to seek evidence. Um, we know what are the reliable resources. So if we can direct them to all these reliable resources, I think patients depend on us to give them an evidence-based recommendation. Um, and if we can uh, promote ourselves as the medicines expert, I think they will eventually come to us um, for information. I think also um, once we start working, we really see the value in like communicating com effective communication with the patients and engaging and involving them in that conversation. Um, and I think that that's how really, you know, like mom, my mom likes to engage with, talk to other moms. Um, but if I am able to feed that correct information to her and let her spread the word, I think that's a lot more effective for her to spread the word rather than for me. So I think if we can just leverage our channels um, and then spread the truth um, rather than um, getting people to, um, I guess I think a lot of the myths are spread by like people like my mom anyway. <laughs> so, you know, if, if we can get the right information to the right people, I think that's um, a, a, a one of the ways, other than of course um, um, distributing the, the right evidence-based um, yeah. information. Thank you, Renly. Yeah, John. Yeah, another way is uh, another way is uh, yeah when like Sophia said uh, using the official website of WHO, Ministry of Health, and um, organizations such as the FIP and FIPYPD, you can as well using those websites get the approved emails and send direct messages. It would always be available to respond when necessary, so that um, leading officials in those bodies can still give you where you cannot understand uh, maybe some information that is on the website. Thanks. Thank you, Iquabo. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, I will pass the floor uh, to Louisa. Thank you. Um, okay, so we got a question from a faculty advisor for students who are members of IPSF. And essentially the question is, um, if anyone can share advice as to how to encourage students to be more involved in IPSF and, and develop their leadership skills. So um, if you had advice to give as far as people who aren't very aware of IPSF, where would you suggest that they start getting involved or, or what other advice might you offer? Uh, the question to Osama and Karima, and of course, Joao, if you'd like to answer. Um, may I? Yes, go ahead. Ah, thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, like you mentioned, being a member of uh, an IPSF member organization makes you uh, a member of IPSF. So, as uh, Someone where you can advise, especially to uh, engage in, in extracurricular activities. Um, I think being uh, uh, being the liaison between IPSF as the source of these opportunities and the students can uh, facilitate a certain integration of those uh, in the activities that are shared uh, with our audience. Uh, so by creating a certain link between the student and the organization that is APHASAP 
or IPSF and the different opportunities, we can at least guarantee a certain interaction that may lead to a more involved um, engagement. It is the typical story for most students who is a World Congress, the Pan American Regional Symposium, or NIPS uh, or NFIP World Congress, on a NFIP regional event. So, being in a certain position where you get to experience the events and the activities would lead eventually to a or a position of responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Osama. Uh, Joao or Karima, did you have anything you'd like to add to that? Um, yes, I would like just to say that IPSF is um, having several activities each year and all activities are shared on our social media platform. So I would suggest to follow the social media platform, try to uh, share, reshare those activities as they are all engaging our members and uh, really uh, enthusiastic. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, great. I will pass the floor back to Joelle for another question. Okay, thank you, Louisa. Um, there is one question about uh, how often do uh, the do we meet internationally or nationally uh, as part of the teams of both YPT and IPSF. So I think it's better to answer it accordingly according to pre-COVID. Uh, situation. Um, I don't know if someone wants to explain like how often are we able to meet each other, how many opportunities do we get to attend events, to be together, um, to get to know each other as well. So is there anyone that would like to go? Um, I'll answer on behalf of YPG. So pre-COVID, um, we normally get to, so the steering committee gets to meet um, once a year, twice a year, so once during the mid-year meeting where they would all gather together, um, they'll fly over to where uh, the agreed um, place and then what, another time during the Congress. And then in terms of like online meetings, I think they just meet every now and again, like um, as needed. Um, so that's pre-COVID, but post-COVID, obviously we couldn't get to meet uh, on um, face to face at all. So we didn't have our mid-year meeting. Um, we, uh, we've, uh, Within the steering committee, we have our monthly meetings. Um, within the subcommittee, we have our quarterly meetings. Um, and then with like big leaderships, we have like um, on an as needed basis. Um, and also with the FIP, we come manager monthly. So that's within the steering and subcommittee. Um, but um, we have lots of online meetings, but you know, there's no really face-to-face -face meeting. We do have, like I said, um, I think we've mentioned a lot about all the activities that we're doing this year they are all online so if that counts then you know on average I would do I would have probably three to five FIP or YPG meetings in a week but that's probably not the norm um, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add with our stuff but your, or Ikoibom, your experience but I think it really varies um, depending on the position that you hold Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Renly. Uh, from IPSF, do you want to say something regarding regarding this question? How often do you meet, and which opportunities are available? Uh, mm, uh, okay. I try to answer the question. Thank you, Joao. Well, uh, it is the and for a good uh, or a positive uh, having more meetings than needed is of course a bad hit to the morale of the team and 
may uh, make it uh, sound or feel less important. So it, it is, uh, it would depend on the, um, of course, the uh, internal regulation of the organization and of course the workload of your own team and uh, your own organization. When it comes to meeting on international levels, I think it is uh, for a student's perspective, convenient to have it once a year for something that is uh, important and should be decided upon uh, by meeting in person. However, for the activities on a national level where there is a possibility to meet on a monthly basis, especially for your national committee, that would be very interesting for action to different aspects that are happening or different events that are happening on the scene of the student's life. So, like I said, in summary, it is important to keep your meetings uh, purpose-driven and not to overdo it and to make sure to uh, obey to the internal regulation of your own organization and make it proportionally su sufficient or adequate to the workload of your own team. And thank you. Thank you, Osama. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you for the answer. I will now pass the floor to Luisa. Okay, I believe we've answered all of the questions we've received. Um, some of the questions were answered via text rather than live, um, but I will just kind of mention some of the most common questions we got. Um, everyone will receive a certificate of attendance on Monday to the email that they registered with. So you don't need to do anything additional to receive that certificate. Um, additionally, we encourage you to uh, um, apply for membership to FIP. You can just go to FIP.org and look for the, jo the join button. Um, and that'll walk you through the whole process. Um, and other than that, we encourage you to join um, along and follow our social media for both YPG and IPSF because that will really give you the most up-to-date information about all of the opportunities available to our members. Um, and always feel free to reach out to us either via email or social media with any questions or any other feedback or thoughts on how we can improve. We're always looking for um, additional input. So um, hopefully we'll see lots of you in the future and um, keep an eye out for our subcommittee calls in the coming months. Um, there'll be lots and lots of opportunities to get involved and we'd love to have new faces and new input from people who haven't been involved before as well. Does everyone wanna just um, wave, say goodbye? <laughs> Have a great rest of your day wherever you are. It's early for me, Bye. but I know it's late for others. <laughs> yeah, it's almost midnight here. Thank you, everyone. You've probably <laughs> just woken up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Hello, from all parts of the world. Bye. Stay safe.